The sponsor of my stream and podcast is DistroKid. If you want Sam percent off on your first subscription with DistroKid, release your music to the world on every major music platform. Make sure to go to my website, andrewvanzark.com, and click on the discount link under the tab of DistroKid. You don't know the power of the dark side. Welcome to the Andrew Van Zark Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Andrew Van Zar Podcast here on the Planet X radio station. And today we're going to talk about 10 things we loved about Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, written on February 25th, 2022, by Christian Baver. So climb aboard the Halcyon Star Cruiser and read StarWars.com's first impressions from a recent voyage on the all-new immersive experience. Inside the engineering room of the Halcyon Star Cruiser, things are getting dire. The First Order is closing in, and the newest member of the Resistance must work together to keep the ship from slipping under the regiment's control. Suddenly amid the chaos, the towering form of Chewbacca, the Wookiee, emerges in the balls of the ship. The Resistance hero is here to help. Out for a moment, everything else falls away. The First Order threats and the puzzles of switches before me. And I am 12 years old again. Ooh, that sounds interesting. I really love that. I really wish I could go to the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. So I'm going to read what Kevin Baver has to say about it, you know? So Chewbacca and R2-D2 were the first Star Wars action figures I had as a child. So my affinity runs deep. And I also had R2-D2 and, Chew- and Chewbacca. And also I had uh, C-3PO action figures. And then I had a bunch, a bunch of other action figures. But they were like tiny action figures, not really like uh, six inches. This were more like uh, three inches, the ones I had. But as the Wookiee tries to help me solve the complicated systems of light and switches needed to bring the ship back under the cruise control, I find myself feeling a little starstruck eventually. We work together for a resistance victory and share a high five and a hug as he retreats. I spontaneously blurt out, I love you. I'm sure he knows. The interaction was one of my many memorable moments from my Star Wars at Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, an innovative immersive experience that puts you on a journey of an elite voyage to planet Batu and beyond, from boarding the ships to the grand finale in the Artrium. Here are 10 things we loved about our two day on the Halcyon. All right, let's find out those 10 things. So number one, aliens walk among us. It wouldn't be the galaxy far, far away without aliens. And Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser commits to that authentically. Whether it's the performers uh, bringing key characters to life like Gaia and Twi'lek crooner and her Rodian batmate, Wadi, or the passengers. On our voyage, one visitor committed to a full face of blue makeup and a hat reminiscent of Cab Bane, while another had Sarbac, Sarbrak like horns producing from her head, a human crew member tasked with helping to get me settled in a cabin remarked that the floors had just been redone as some huts paid a visit and left a discernible sm- slime trail. Damn huts with their slimy sluggy shit. Number two, there are many few faces to interact with and a few recognizable ones. Besides wanting to hug Chewbacca, the Wookiee, You may find yourself helping Rey with a special mission, starting up at the frightening mask of Supreme Leader Kylo Ren and sending intel to C-3PO and R2-D2. But there are also new friends aboard, including the delightful awkward Sammy, a Coraline mechanic who yearns to do good for the galaxy, and SK-620, the astromech droid in his close companion of Cruise Director Lenka Mok, 
from the moment muster, Captain Riola Keevan. Welcoming ceremony comes to a close. You're invited to, uh, to play whatever role you choose, letting your curiosity guide you to interact with the crew and a few new passengers. L.T. Harman Croy and his First Order Stormtroopers. Yes, interesting, interesting. When all those characters come in there, like, I, w I would love to see uh, uh, R2-D2 and a C-3PO walking by and, and going, like, around me or, or, or something, you know? That'd be really cool. When I went to the Galaxy, uh, Galaxy's Edge on Disney, all I had walking around me were uh, Kylo Ren, his First Order troopers, and I think I saw Rey, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, that's basically what I saw. And then on the Star Tour, I had a glimpse of Darth Vader and some Jedis. Number three, the ship's design is unlike anything you've ever seen in person. From the sprawling atrium to the view of the stars, from the bridge, the Halcyon has captured the fleet of stepping onto a pristine Star Wars ship like Dryden Voss Jets or the Millennium Falcon before Han Solo took the helm. Although there's plenty to do aboard, make time to sit in your cabin and watch the stars from your personal viewport and appreciate the attention to detail, including the Arabish, among the many languages translated on the emergency instructions on the cabin door. Oh yes, I would love to sit down and indulge myself into uh, a Millennium Falcon or Dryden Voss Yacht kind of experience, you know? Because I am a huge fan of the vehicles of Star Wars. A lot. I love that a lot, you know? So, number four. You can explore the climate simulators, cool your heels in the brings, and learn to wield a lightsaber. There are smaller corners of the ship that provide a unique bit of atmosphere all, all their own. The climate simulator provides the chance to get some fresh air and acclimate to Batu's bright suns. If you talk to the right people or cross the wrong ones, you'll gain access to the brings. And in the lightsaber training room, you can tap into the force for one of the, light, the highlights of the various trainings. Learning how to use the weapons of the Jedi. Number five. You choose your own destiny. Using the handy data pad, I kept track of the day's itinerary and communications from the key cruise members who I had spoken to earlier in my stay. Although some other stayings on my voyage aligned with the First Order, I worked with the resistance spies to get intel of hyperspace tracking and found a friend in the underworld in Raytheon Cole, Gaia's manager. Yeah, that's really interesting that you can choose your destiny, uh, whether you want to be resistance or First Order or any other side you want to take, you know? That is, that is extremely good because it would have been kind of okay if, if you would have only been able to be either Jedi or Resistance, you know, the good guys, if I might say. But you can choose whether you want to be Resistance or First Order or a Jedi. You know, you, you forge your own destiny, you know? That's really great. Before we continue reading a little bit about 10 things that we love about the Star Wars Hotel. So, yeah. So let's get it. Here's a word from our sponsor. Andrew Van Zark. 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 The sponsor of my stream and podcast is DistroKid. If you want 10% off on your first subscription with DistroKid, release your music to the world on every major music platform. Make sure to go to my website, andrewvanzark.com, and click on the discount link under the tab of DistroKid. Now that we're back from that awesome song, let's continue here with uh, 10 things that they loved on the StarWars.com uh, website of the Star Wars Hotel here. So, number six. I finally understand how to play Sabacc. Wait. Don't tell me that they teach you how to play Sabacc right there. And you get to actually, like, literally play it. Not just they tell you and they do a simulation. No, you, no way. It's no way you can actually play Sabacc. I've always loved 
how that game looked. So thanks to crew member Keeley, follow passenger Ashley Extain, and I now know how to play Sabak. In the Sublight Lounge, several other Voyagers enjoy rounds of Sabak at the Holo Table in the Lounge Center of co or cocktails from around the galaxy. The lounge itself is a highlight for anyone who's ever wondered what it's like to step inside a high-end cantina. That is amazing. So uh, you, you sit there on, on the lounge center and, and then you end up playing Sabak on the holo table. Wow. That is completely amazing. I, I, oh, wow. If you, if you have the chance to go to the Star Wars hotel, come on, make sure to do so. Because learning how to play Sabak is just amazing. So number seven. The food is unlike anything you've ever seen. From a fish dish with moving parts and a blue shrimp appetizer to waffles with the Halcyon logo and blue bantha butter. The menu has been carefully tailored to complete the immersive experience for all five senses. Okay, I would love to try the food because, you know, it's Star Wars, you know? Whatever Star Wars themed food you can build in make me think that oh this are galactic parasites and they're just shrimps you know <laughs> i wonder how you're gonna disguise our food into feeling star wars you know you know what i mean so number eight there's so much going on you'll wish you had camino cloning technology as important as it is to talk to key characters other passengers also help enrich the experience the first and last event of the immersive story happens in the main hall, in front of everyone's ab aboard. But there are countless interactions transpiring throughout the ship. While I was in this post, Ray and Chewbacca cornered other members of my party in a hallway with a request to help transport some quaxium. In the lightsaber training room, another group of 15 passengers open a holocron to travel a special message unbeknownst to the other nearly 200 people on board. These smaller moments make every experience unique and keep you guessing about who might be just around the corner. Number nine, you can watch your favorite Star Wars movie from your bed and absolutely should. Living the story is a large part of the fun, but when it was time to relax on the first night, I could think of no better entertainment to wind down than my favorite Star Wars films. I have lost count of the number of times I've watched Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, but I will always remember watching it that night. Dude, Empire Strikes Back is like the best Star Wars film ever. Starting off because I love Hoth. Hoth is my, you can see it on the, on the overlay here on the, on the show here, where I, all right, I'm portraying here a little bit of Hoth with the snow walkers, you know? And finally, the finale, number 10. Whatever path you choose, your adventure hurdles towards one epic conclusion, a clash between good and evil. Inside the main atrium, Rey and Kylo Ren go ahead to head in battle that calls upon the force itself for a thrilling piece of immersive theater coming at you from all corners of the room and culminating in fireworks celebration worthy of Coruscant. But if you're anything like me, even as familiar sounds of John Williams' score blast through the speakers to herald the end of your story, you won't want to leave. Now you gotta book your voyage on the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser now. You know, I do find it really interesting that it's not just a hotel. It makes you go through events. Like some are theatrical, some are more scavenger hunty, uh, some are more like space voyager kind of thing. You know, that's really interesting. Most hotels on Disney are just go in there, go to sleep, maybe go to the pool, maybe indulge in a little bit of decoration from our Disney stuff, but that's about it, you know? And this one here actually makes you, like if you were on a ride of Star Wars mixed with your hotel room, you know? What better than that? And we're gonna be heading out to new worlds and new dimensions and new galaxies because we are on the galaxy far, far away on the Planet X radio station with your anniversary podcast show where we discuss everything and anything related to Star Wars, whether it is the lore itself 
or theories. Random knick-knack, kind of gimmicky news about Star Wars, whether it's from, like, Star Wars uh, Park on the Galaxy's Edge on Disney, whether it is clothing for Star Wars that you can buy as merch, accessories, silly Legos. Uh, it doesn't matter. I used to I used to have a bunch of Star Wars Legos, so I still have them, but they're all crunched and, 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 and dismantled on, on a box full of other Legos from other franchises, but let's get it. Now you're losing your power. 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 The sponsor of my stream and podcast is DistroKid. If you want Sam percent off on your first subscription with DistroKid, release your music to the world on every major music platform. Make sure to go to my website, andrewvanzark.com, and click on the discount link under the tab of DistroKid. This was the Ander Van Zarp Podcast. If you have any thoughts or any messages that you want to leave me, go check me out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or my website, www.andervansart.com. And I'll catch you on the flip side. When you listen to Ander Van Zark, you listen with power. Now, you're listening with power. Andrew Van Zark, stream on every major music platform. Power to the music.